uh, we have the pleasure to um, welcome Professor Hein Eidbüschel from the University of Louvain. Good morning, uh, Hein. Um, I've been very impressed by your recent uh, studies on the use of rotational angiograms mm -hmm. in the way that you are using this system that you designed, that you pioneered in Louvain to help guiding the different ablation techniques. Can you describe this, uh, the system and what are the current applications? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, in fact, it's a very simple approach. Um, when we do electrophysiology, we know that we have to solve electrical problems in the heart. And the heart, of course, has its anatomy, its form. And we have taken somehow for granted over the years that we don't see the anatomy very well, because on fluoroscopy, you don't see very much. You see the position of the catheters, that's it. Uh, nevertheless, for complex procedures, we have over the years felt the need for better imaging, and that's why electroanatomical systems have been developed. And there you go around with a catheter and you get some sort of anatomy, but in fact it's very rude anatomy, it's not very accurate. And if what our system did um, and is doing with the help of rotational angiography is in fact making a very accurate anatomical representation uh, very useful during a procedure. The problem we have not used that before is that or having a 3D image was kind of complicated. You had to send the patient to radiology and then you had to bring the patient in the cat lab. You had to bring these two images together. That is always difficult. Um, there was the cost. There was the issue of radiation. And I think over the years we have solved most of these uh, problems now uh, using rotational angiography. And we have developed uh, rotational angiography techniques where we can do the imaging with a very low amount of radiation in the order of one, maximum two millisieverts. We have also developed techniques to have a very accurate anatomic representation to bring that very accurately into the fluoroscopy and uh, to reduce the radiation dose during the rest of the procedure. And at the end of those 10 years of development, I think we have now come to a new sort of paradigm. That is that we first look at the anatomy and then we start working inside the anatomy and solve the electrical problem. We call it anatomo electrical mapping. Before we develop the application, um, is it the system specific devoted to one specific company or can it be applicable to different type of uh, yeah. Generators. So what, what we have developed is, is a LARCA system, which is software which in fact takes images from a cat lab. And that can be any type of cat lab. That can be Philips, Siemens, GE. The, the system, the LARCA system, takes the 3D images and merges them with the fluoroscopy. What we have done um, within the LARCA system, however, is improved, for instance, the segmentation tools. Um, often we have seen that with the existing segmentation tools that in fact construct the 3D shell from the images you have taken in the rotational angiography, that these uh, segmentation tools were suboptimal. And what we need as electrophysiologists is segmentation of fine details. Think about the ridge in front of the left-sided pulmonary veins or think about uh, eustachian valve in the right atrium. And uh, so we have also optimized the segmentation to do that. But in fact, it can be plugged into any uh, cat lab. Is it a manual segmentation or automatic segmentation? It's uh, automatic, but we have uh, programmed a, a number of parameters that you can play with as physician. And um, you really need one or two minutes as a physician to try to optimize that segmentation by modifying only two parameters. Um, and I think it's worthwhile. I don't see that as a waste of time during my procedure, because when I'm doing that, I'll, I'm already looking at the anatomy and I'm starting to absorb how the patient looks like inside. So it's not a waste of time. I, I try to just optimize that step because it will help me during the rest of the procedure. We can also put other catheters during the time of processing of the first uh, rotational yeah, angiogram. Yeah. Sure, sure, yeah. yes. Uh, and usually you're with two operators in the cat lab yeah. and one is still <coughs> manipulating the catheters while the other one is working on the software. Um, also the different imaging companies are working on similar 
software systems. Um, although I think we really have believed in the concept over the last 10 years, and, and I think we have shown clearly the way and where we can get to. Hmm. Yeah. And what are um, your main application? Uh, which is the order of, say, the, the best indication and, uh, mm -hmm. and so on and so It's a good question. Of course, we started with the complex things like the pulmonary vein isolation. You really need to see where the pulmonary veins are. We started with congenital arrhythmias, mustards, uh, fontans, uh, sennings. Uh, you can all nicely reconstruct them. You can even do two rotational angles of the left and the right heart and bring them together and use them uh, as the mapping tool. But I must say, and that was in my presentation also, over the years I've been impressed so much of what I could learn from the good anatomy that we have moved into so-called simpler and simpler types of arrhythmias, like atrial flutter, where we visualize the cave or tricuspid isthmus, uh, like some accessory pathways, like ectopic atrial tachycardias, and even now uh, avinodal reentrant tachycardia. Um, we always think that that septum where we have to burn the slow pathway is somehow similar in all patients, but it's not. We are different in the inside like we are the outside. And we can nicely demonstrate that <laughs> and adapt our procedure to it. So, uh, um, In the left ventricle, I've found the segmentation and uh, it's sometimes difficult to do some rotational angiograms. Mm -hmm because you inject the, pro the product in the right ventricle, right, in the right uh, chambers? No, no, we always inject in the chamber that you want to visualize. Okay. And okay. that's a very important uh, thing to know. So if we want to visualize the left ventricle, we will inject into the left ventricle. Yeah. Um, our original developmental work was with adenosine um, cardiac arrest, so to say. And we also did that in VT patients. We were thinking that that was safer. Uh, in fact, we induced more ventricular tachycardia with adenosine. I still don't understand why than we do now with rapid pacing. So now we always use rapid pacing. And uh, the speed of the pacing depends on the left ventricular function. If you have a very bad left ventricle, you don't need to pace very fast no. to get very good um, filling. How, how did you solve um, the issue of patient breathing and the patient of patient movement? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the patient movement, of course, is an important issue. If the patient moves on the table, the whole registration is lost. Um, that's not so much an issue in our lab because we do all the procedures under general anesthesia. Of course, that's more of an issue if the patient is awake. Uh, nevertheless, you can re-register during the procedure you need another angiographic injection in your chamber of interest and you use that to realign. It's not that much work, but in some patients it may be a problem of renal function. Um, but in an anesthetized patient, that's, that's not an issue. Respiration is another fact. Again, um, since we have our patients under anesthesia, we can do both the rotational angiography and the ablation itself under apnea. So the, there is no respiration. Nevertheless, um, my feeling as a clinician is that it's not a major issue to have continuous respiration because you always have that phase of, of maximum expiration and as a, as a clinician you always refer to that phase uh, and you do your alignment there. So mm -hmm. clinically it's not that much of a problem. <coughs> now there is mainly one prototype uh, in Leuven. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that uh, you are trying to expand this uh, this technology to other centers, mm -hmm. and we will be surely very happy to have it one day in Bordeaux. Well, thank um, you, thank you. And uh, don't see. I thank you also for uh, this interview and uh, all our best wishes for your, uh, say, for the promotion of this uh, very, very interesting technology. Thank you very much. Thank Heine. you very much. Michel, bye. -bye. Yeah. <coughs>